All right, so um, welcome Nana also to Langfest 2019. Um, you had this great idea to start this year something very, very special. Can you maybe first of all present yourself and then uh, we can maybe discuss this a little bit uh, further of what you're presenting? Yeah, so my name is Nella Buffmeyer. I am a Spanish as a second language tutor and Recently, I am doing more interpretation and translation work for companies, and, and then I'm trying to explore just different aspects of linguistics as I kind of learn more language. Uh, currently, I'm located in the south of Arizona, so I'm working on doing excursions to Mexico and stuff and like around that where I can bring people down to Naco, Sonora, and teach them how to order food in Spanish. And, then they can go do it on their own or teach them how to buy medicine if they want to go to the pharmacy so they feel comfortable being able to do those types of activities. And um, Nella, we've met last year actually and you were the one inviting me in the end to, to do this together with you and also with Anna, right? Mm -hmm. um, how? Tell us maybe a little bit first what was your initial idea and, and what is that we're going to talk about in the end? So my initial idea was to do something on just self-care because I realized that last year kind of everybody discussed this notion of how you stay motivated, how they are different aspects of how they learn languages and keep themselves interested throughout the process. Um, and I just kind of started learning French and Portuguese and playing with new languages. And it was really impactful kind of watching everybody briefly mm -hmm. discuss this topic but never really and delving into it and like engaging like what that really means like how do you have self-compassion how do you create that in your daily lifestyle and I remember watching you present and doing like physical exercise and it was just a lot of fun and energetic and I still can say remember some of my German words and, <laughs> and then I remember Anna and doing body movement and actually before presenting I was extremely nervous and and I, like, I moved and breath, I breathed with her and I like, felt relaxed. And so I wanted to work with both of you. And I thought it would be a beautiful way to kind of discuss different aspects of self-care and how vital it is and like how there's many ways you can take care of yourself. It's not just doing a push-up or taking deep mm -hmm. breaths or writing in a journal. You can kind of do a mixture and pick whatever works for you. Yeah, I think that was really nice. So on the one hand, Langfest made us like somehow well, get to know each other a little better. And also Langfest also made us realizing that we have a lot in common because we really believe that this like healthcare and, and uh, mindfulness is, is in general very important, not only for language learning, but also in general in life, right? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, I think as my social work background, I really, that allowed me to kind of like look into that because I think when you study social work, basically your professors and everybody tells you like, okay, what are your biases? Like, how do you feel about this? How do you, where do your anxieties lie? And so they make you really look at yourself. And so self-care has always been extremely vital for me. And then as I've kind of continued this language journey, I was like, wow, it's even more like important now than ever. Cause I felt like I was like, oh, I really want to do this and this is what I want to be. And this is where I want to be. So yeah. Yeah. I was, uh, well, as you know, I was born and raised in Germany, and, and I, I still believe that it's a country where it's still not um, expressed enough. I mean, healthcare in general is mm -hmm. always on the top priority list of everyone, but how important it is really also for our brain effect. Yeah. No one really talks about that. How's that in the States? I was wondering. I think it just depends on, I think it's very similar probably in Germany. There are some people who I think really focus on that, and then I think there are some people who just don't, and it's so not relevant to their own lives. Yeah. I also think people have a tendency to focus on their friends and their family and their coworkers and making yeah. sure like their mental health and their yeah. like physical health is okay. And we kind of put ourselves like last in yeah. taking care of ourselves. Yeah. And I, that's also another reason why I wanted to bring this to light yeah. um, and kind of collaborate with, pe with two other additional people. Cause I felt, I was like, oh wow, I, I, these two women are, absolutely beautiful and they take care of themselves in so many beautiful ways and I would love to work with them and just kind of experience this with in, in addition. With yeah and it's also something that we've discussed a couple of times that taking care of our body and of our well health mental health mm. as well 
um, is actually not as difficult as we imagine. Mm -hmm. And this is also what we want to show, right? Yes, That exactly. everyone can do that really in daily life, basically. Yeah. Right? And there's just simple exercises that you can implement into your, like, five minutes a day. And it'll make a world of difference, like, a month down the road. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Because we're always talking about this time issue. We don't have enough time. And what we want to show is that you don't need to basically take really an hour to do these things it's it's already nice i mean the, the more time you take the better yeah but it's already nice if you just do some small exercises and this is basically what yeah. we want to show everyone how easy it is so even just taking like three deep breaths in the morning and writing one thing you're grateful for in any aspect of life you can just see an improvement over a short period of time and like your quality of life and just level of happiness and ability to like take care of others because I also think if you can't take you can't take care of others without taking care of yourself, and yeah. I think that's something we tend to forget. Yeah. So it's also about this sharing effect, and what we are actually uh, going to show as well is that one thing is so basically we have the three different parts. Can, mm -hmm. can you? Because it was initially your idea. Can you maybe tell about the three different parts that we're going to show? Yeah. So Anna is actually going to be discussing very mindfulness through breath and kind of visualization of goals. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to be discussing the cognitive and like muscle memory and how we can yeah. learn vocabulary through like ec work, like exercise and simple exercises. And then my activity focuses on basically self-compassion and how we tend to be self-critics of ourselves and then community building. Because, I mean, as you know, like learning a language, you have to have a community of people to be able to speak yeah. to. Because if you never speak, then you're never going to really learn a language the way you want to. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So I think one thing is the, the mindset and the other one is also that um, if you feel happy, you learn better. Mm -hmm. But also if you combine it somehow with a physical activity and it does not necessarily need to be something that is really hard. You don't need to be an athlete or, or any like super fitness person. Yeah. It's, it's just enough if you do movements and combine them with vocabulary learning. And this is in the end what we do also with Burn and Learn and we have seen amazing results. So people who have done that over half a year now, we can really see compared to standard ways um, when you learn vocabulary. And it's not all about vocabulary learning, but still it is part of the process when you learn the language. And when you combine it somehow with physical exercises, the effects are amazing. Not only do we feel better, but also, as you said, you still remember the German words from last yeah, year, right? Exactly. <laughs> and um, it's not only with German, uh, with the German language, you can basically do that with every every language this year because it's 2019 and the year of indigenous languages. I'm going to show that for Nahuatl, which is a um, an indigenous language from Mexico. And have you, I mean, you're very interested in, in the Spanish speaking culture or Latin American yeah. culture, especially. Have you any experience or any, have you had any contact with Nahuatl? No, I have not. Not in, not where I am in Arizona or in Mexico where my, my town is located. It's five miles from like Naco, Sonora. And then so there's not much interaction I've had. Most of my interactions are just kind of going in and yeah. enjoying the culture and the food and eating some lunch and then yeah. going home. <laughs> <laughs> what made you want to really study and kind of delve into now it as well as kind of start go now it, which is something yeah. that you recently started yeah. as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, very very interesting, definitely. And in general, so your mother tongue is English, um, mm -hmm. and uh, you speak Spanish, and this is also what you do in your life, right? Yeah, Teaching. so I, I speak Spanish, and I teach Spanish, and then I am currently like, learning French, and then Good. eventually I'm going to get to Portuguese, and I have now a long laundry list of languages after last year. I really kind of got my, I was like, I want to learn all the languages. <laughs> and that's something else that we definitely have in common, to share our passion with others and to go also to this like deep level when, yeah. we, when we talk about uh, uh, languages and when we learn mm -hmm. languages. Um, is that something um, that w you would also call your passion? So not only learning languages, but also teaching languages? I love teaching. I love just interacting and seeing people grow in language. And yeah. I think um, through learning a language, you really are able to experience like a new culture and like a new side of yourself really you, you're able to like, express yourself differently and you learn so much you can't really separate language and culture and I think through this through speaking you can you learn so much about who you are and different personalities that could come oh, out yeah. that you never knew that you actually had yeah. which I think is amazing um, and 
that's kind of what motivates me to keep wanting to learn more yeah. languages and teaching more languages eventually. I really want to get into also more like translation and interpretation where I can interact with people, but it's not necessarily so education based as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the same for me. I really enjoy this part of learning languages, but what I even more enjoy is to help others also and, and motivate others mm -hmm. and to show everyone that it's, you know, some, some people have this belief saying that, oh, I, I didn't grow up in an environment that was with, I don't know, three, four languages. Me neither. Mm -hmm. You? No. Right? No. It was a multi, mo monolingual. It was just monolingual household, yeah. yeah. Same for me, and, and this is something, again, that we share. We, we don't need that, basically. It's, it's really about all what we, what we do later and mm -hmm. our own responsibility, right? Yeah, and I think I also find that people, you, when I teach language, I find that people almost need, like, coaching through, like, these moments of, I'm horrible, I don't know what I'm doing, I can't say this, and I just kind of am like, you're not, no, that's not true, you just, you know, just breathe through it and say what you need to say, it's okay to make mistakes and learn from those mistakes, and that's how, that is how you grow in language, and not being so hard on yourself and criticizing yourself for, and comparing, we tend to compare ourselves to others instead of find similarities in how mm -hmm. we're feeling, and like, similarities in our struggles and I think that's also something like through this workshop that or through this activity we're going to focus on just like instead of comparing my differences that I don't speak 12 languages I only speak really two languages and I'm learning my third and that's okay because I I also struggle with grammar and you struggle with grammar so that's something we have in common so focusing on similarities instead of judging ourselves on differences yeah definitely and I always believe this, I call this the domino effect. Mm -hmm. When you start one thing in your life, and in this case, for example, what we want to show is how you take care of yourself, how you take care of your mental health and body health in general. Mm -hmm. And once you start with that, and then you will see that a lot of things will become easier in your life. So basically it's like the one stone is moving the next stone, yeah. basically, yeah, kind yeah, of, exactly. right? Is that your experience as well? Like I would definitely say so, and I think um, I, I, after, especially after last year, I really worked on like, oh, I, I'm new to this community, but I, everybody has gone through this journey, and it's kind of pushed me further through this journey, which really motivated me to come back and yeah. do this experience again and come with a different level of confidence and feel better about what I'm able to present and like provide mm. to this community. Yeah, yeah, same. And also, Anna is doing so. Anna is going to do the the workshop uh, with us, and her approach is also really nice right and mm -hmm. both of us we did the, the yoga exercises yeah. with her yeah and i think it's just really nice to also see um how yoga is also connected um with a lot of things it's not only the body but it's also to to keep calm as well is yeah. another point yeah. right and visualization is being the ability to like visualize what you want and then go after it is also i think something that's so beautiful what she presents oh yeah you like breath and body movement and visualizing what you want and then going for it. Yeah, 100%. Um, yeah, definitely. And then how do you share that as well? Because you live in the States. How do you share that with your people there? Because you do a lot of like social work as well, right? Mm -hmm. Or community work? Yeah, so through, um, based just through like helping people like work through, like I mentioned, like not focusing so much on what you don't have, but focusing on what you do have and focusing on what strengths you do have and then just working on your weaknesses like a day at a time and not focusing on how hard everything is going to be but moving forward, right? If we, if we stay stuck in one place, then we're just going to feel like we're moving backwards and we're taking yeah. two steps down yeah. versus just keeping on moving forward and letting, don't like, don't sweat the small stuff, you know, and basically faking it till you make it. You can, you can get anywhere you want as long as you just keep pushing yourself and trying to take care of yourself and working on your mental health and smiling and they yeah. say like doing a power yeah. stance right before yeah. like an important thing you have to do like if you just stand yeah. in a power stance for yeah. five minutes you'll feel much more confident doing yeah, that, try doing it. that activity. Try it, right? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> definitely um and i think this is also something very beautiful what i always try when i go to these polyglot events is to to keep telling people you said this we shouldn't compare each other and it's not about at these events some people believe that it's about competition or anything like that it's not at all it's more like sharing a passion helping each other and also discovering like different things we are all we all have in the end different 
strengths and different weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And so we can somehow also learn from each other. And I think what I or what I would like also to, to tell everyone is that whatever our strengths might be, we can always share it with others. So mm -hmm. there's like um, social, I call this social poly polyglotism yeah, right, right. Um, <laughs> about, uh, yeah, in the end, sharing what you know and and try to help the to make the world somehow a little better with yeah, that, right? And exactly. And I think there are times even where you would think um, like somebody who speaks 18 languages might have the same reservations as you when they're yeah. speaking a new language. Oh, yeah. And if, and that's, and you're like, oh, I never thought that that would be you. Like, you're amazing at everything. Well, that's, I mean, we all have reservations and we all have strengths. So I think finding that commonality and that community, it's really inspiring when you come to these events. And yeah. I just remember leaving here being like, I'm so inspired. I want to learn everything. And, <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and so, and I'm like, that's kind of what brought me back. And I really yeah. wanted to share that experience. Yeah. Yeah. Same. And I think also when you, when you see, when you meet the people, when you meet polyglots out there and you might know them from YouTube, but you somehow forget about that they have also started being afraid one mm -hmm. day, you know, it's like, the videos that you might see nowadays are not the videos, are not the first videos, and and so they they just show what you see is what how they're doing it right now. But in the end, they might have been super afraid doing their first video, for mm -hmm. example, speaking uh, online in a foreign language. And this is also what you share with people, right? Yeah. It's really this overcoming the fear and and seeing the progress as well, right? Yeah, and I think you're able just to see through prog see more progress through being more confident and yeah. like and realizing what you have and also realizing what you can work on. Yeah. Instead of saying what you don't have, I just always say like, well, what can you work on? This isn't something you don't have. It's, it's something everybody's capable. Yeah. We can all learn languages and this is such a beautiful event yeah. to see how other people go about learning languages and see different resources and different opportunities and create a really beautiful community of people yeah. that have all the same passion for yeah for and we've all been beginners once right yeah. so this is i think also important if you feel like you're a beginner in something well just go for it and yeah. uh, combine it also with a mental health that also helps you to to get daily motivation mm -hmm. as well and, and the physical health gives you energy yeah definitely yeah. well that's good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>